Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Marion Robert Morrison became professionally known as John Wayne with the nickname of Duke. This popular actor and filmmaker became an icon of Hollywood's golden age. For decades, he sold out movie theaters, frequently appearing in westerns and war movies. Off screen, he was a staunch, steadfast conservative, and he supported all those causes. At that time, there were few in the movie industry that would publicly do the same thing. His career flourished from the silent era of the 1920s through the American New Wave of films as he appeared in a total of 179 films and television productions. He ended up picking up his Best Actor Oscar for 1969's True Grit. Ten years later, and three years after he had finished his final film, he was dead. He had beaten lung cancer a decade earlier, but his life would eventually be claimed by cancer, but stomach cancer. Duke died on June 11, 1979. Despite him having spent decades as one of the most recognizable names in American pop culture, for 20 years, his final resting place was hidden, an unmarked grave. When he finally did get a tombstone, it's not an elaborate one. It's a comparatively small one and very nondescript, especially when you look at John Wayne's larger-than-life persona. But this in itself says a lot about the man. After he died, his family held a private, family and friends-only funeral. The prying eyes of the public was kept away by security personnel. The family decided not to mark his grave at all. They felt like disclosing that location publicly would be disrespectful to the families of others that were buried near him. They didn't want his grave to turn out to be a shrine and disrespect all the people that were around them by trampling on their graves. There may have been also a lot more to it than that. They had a desire to protect the integrity of other graves in the cemetery. His family felt like at the time that if they marked the grave, it would be an attraction for vandalism from left-wing protesters. This famous actor's grave would remain unmarked for the next 20 years. But in 1998, that changed. His family identified his grave with a simple bronze marker. You can find his grave on a slope that looks out over the Pacific Ocean at Pacific View Memorial Park in Corona del Mar. This Southern California cemetery is one of the most beautiful final resting places you'll ever see. His final home is indicated by a simple bronze marker depicting the Duke on horseback, a scene from the Old West in the background. The marker also has a remarkable quote printed on it. It states, Tomorrow is the most important thing in life. Comes to us at midnight, very clean. It's perfect when it arrives, and it puts itself in our hands. It hopes we've learned something from yesterday. That quote came from Wayne himself from a 1971 interview with Playboy magazine. Many decades after his death, people remember Duke for expressing himself very simply, but in a very profound way. He seemed to always exude profound wisdom in this simplicity that he lived. He was born in Winterset, Iowa, the son of a pharmacist, but he actually grew up in Southern California. He went on to get a football scholarship from the University of Southern California, but he lost that scholarship after he had an accident when he was body surfing. As a result, he decided to get a job at Fox Film Corporation, doing whatever he could do. This eventually led to him getting into B-movies during the 1930s and becoming friends with the biggest part of his life when he attached himself to John Ford. These two wrote the book, 
on how to do a superb western. Duke was married three times and divorced twice. His wives included one of Spanish-American descent and two from Latin America. He had four children with his first wife, Josephine. He had Michael Wayne, born in 1934. He had Mary, born in 1936. Patrick Wayne was born in July of 1939, and Melinda was born in December of 1940. He then had three more children with his wife, Pilar. Aisha was born in March of 1956. Ethan was born in February of 1962. And Marissa was born in February of 1966. When it came to those he loved, John Wayne always gave it his all. His kids always talk about how affectionate he was at home. He loved to give out bear hugs. And if you walked past him, he was probably going to grab you and give you a hug and a kiss on the head. He admired the sprawling vistas and the breathtaking beauty and the sense of freedom that was ingrained in the United States. And in 1973, he went on to record and express his love for this country. He recorded a self-spoken word album called America, Why I Love Her. He poured out his red, white, and blue heart into recording readings of 10 patriotic poems, all of these backed by sweeping orchestral music. It's been said that John Wayne exuded responsibility, and his favorite four-letter words were hard work. There's nobody that pounded the pavement and put in his time like John Wayne. Since the very early days of him in the movie business, he's been inspiring people time after time. I feel like it's such a grand privilege to go pay my respect to him at Corona Del Mar in this fabulous cemetery. So if you're in Southern California, specifically Orange County, Go by and pay your respects to Duke. I'm sure he'd gladly tip his hat to you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.